Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently in the microphone. We're back in the Middle Earth. Mm. I would probably try to destroy this army of Eastern, the small mm, contingent of Easterlings over here, just so they do not mess with my overall defense of the region. Sadly, as I said, I need to fight those battles manually because the outer resolve has a nasty habit of screwing people up, especially uh, in his older titles and on a higher difficulty level. But truth be told, the sort of the, the feeling of hearing those uh, dwarven uh, battle voiceovers is a uh, reward enough for me to play those uh, small engagements. Oh, they actually have a unit of red dragons again. I already mentioned that I really like this. This unit. Actually, you can see traces of it in this unit from the Third Age. I don't know, they are called like um, Tribe Guard or I don't know, but they have similar, similar two handed weapon, sort of a spear with blades, but they have um, lighter armor. Still fighting with only two left. Overall, this force is strangely um, brave. They are hardly breaking at all. But I, I think Easterlings are like the tier 3 of, mm, I mean, the third the strongest faction of the evil factions because a the, great day is this. the enemy. The first would probably be Mordor. Uh, just because, because even though lights, their frontline troops ruin with uh, might be a little soul. weaker than Isengard's Ulm High, they have access to uh, more monsters such as armored trolls, fell beasts, and so on. So overall, I think they are stronger. Uh, then the second place is Isengard, uh, and the third, I suppose, would be Easterlings because Haradrim. They have pretty crappy infantry. Their only sort of big scary unit uh, are the Mumakil, of course, obviously. By Torin, the enemy lie dead or else flee. Fear us. Got a war horn as, as well. Move! Unable to move! Okay, I need to... Shortly I'll be trying to push back um, against the goblins. I will try to take this force and retake Gundabad. And from here I will strike at Frankfurt. Also I'll get my first unit of Dragonslayers. 
No, you're, you're going, going to Rohan, out of moves. and you're going to check out yes, what is going on with oh, Celeborn, actually. Here you can see a couple of Elven units. But it seems the Galadrim uh, are on their last foot, really, because um, most of the cities seem to be taken by, um, by Mordor. Which is a curious development, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it's bad. Mm, I'll take these. Or maybe these. Yeah, I'll take the fan guards. Unable to move. Add them to these. And March. sort of march um, as reinforcements. Um, here I will need to wait one more turn for the Warsmiths to finish to deal with the public order. Yeah, that's what I need. The elite uh, Nodor units uh, to appear and try to murder me again. Because they try that at every turn, basically. As if they didn't have anything better to do, such as, I don't know, stopping Sauron from destroying all of Middle Earth. Just a random suggestion. Forward! Move out! Move! Mm. Out of moves! Okay, so I'll take those four. Kill them! And I need to destroy this rebel army. Mm. I'll build roads here to facilitate quicker travel. Mm. I don't know what to do with... Because it will be some time before I'm able to actually send reinforcements down there. Construction complete. Large uh, barracks. Oh, that is good actually because that means I can finally build some better troops. Mm. General. Mm, and I'll try to finally exit this city. General. General. Orders. Yes. Chief. March. General, it's not enough for you. Splitting the troops. Orders. Okay, it seems I'm March. mostly Out left without an army because I need to safeguard this settlement here. Um, so you, yes, and you, yes. and you, yes. and you, yes. and you. Yes. Forward. Still not enough. Yes. Mm. Leaving the army. Orders. It's so Change tiresome. Yes. Leaving the army. Keeping the public order. Orders. But even though it's tiresome, I, I still sort of enjoy it. Mm, okay. Sadly, I need to fight this as well because of the. Mm. But I'll. Mm, I'm trying to add uh, timestamps uh, in the description of each video, so you can just, you know, skip between, for example, between the points when I talk about lore or, su or such, um, or the things that seem interesting to you, and just skip uh, the boring parts. Although that's assuming that, that anyone is watching this, which is an optimistic assumption. Which I didn't really make when creating that. Uh, the game actually crashed on me, so here I am again. 
it's just a formality, I need to take care of those bandits. But uh, I remembered one thing that uh, I didn't mention when I was talking about uh, Denethor, which I think is important, so um, it is... And also, not many people know about it, because it wasn't mentioned uh, in the films, and it wasn't, wasn't really, if I remember correctly, it wasn't really even mentioned in the book itself, it was mentioned in, in one of the appendices. Uh, what I mean is, uh, basically, Denethor's uh, daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he did have some, and I think uh, they contributed uh, quite a lot to his um, bitterness and to his also to his distrust of Aragorn. Because um, they have to they have uh, to do with Aragorn himself. What I mean is that before the um, the timeline tam timeline of the books, um, Aragorn actually traveled. To, the Middle Earth uh, sort of uh, incognito, using the name Thorongil, and he served in the army of Rohan, and l later in also in the army of Gondor under uh, Denethor's father, Excelion II. So, uh, and he uh, he proved uh, so good a commander and so you know so good a soldier that actually. The steward Excelion, Denethor's father, uh, showed him great uh, respect and great, uh, you know, he he came to to um, to treat him so well that Denethor felt uh, he actually liked Aragorn better than his own son. So um, he, he sort of felt um, overshadowed by Aragorn's skill. Although he didn't know, of course, at the time uh, that it was uh, the heir of Isildur, he just uh, no, he just uh, known him as as Thorondil, as his uh, sort of incognito name. But uh, later, when he actually um, saw Aragorn uh, riding with Theoden in the Palantir, uh, he must have probably remembered him from. From the, his early years, from the time when he competed with him for his own father's love, so um, I think that is something that uh, contributed quite a lot to his uh, distrust of Aragorn and to his um, sort of to his reluctance and opposition to the idea of uh, relinquishing the throne to him, because uh, it was a personal matter to to some degree, and also I think that that may also kind of explain the, the way mm, that Denethor um, treated his own son, because um, because he was he was raised in such a condition that um, you know he was uh, he was to compete with some other. Uh, person for the attention and for the respect of his uh, his parent, so uh, it may be that he sort of um, repeated the, the same pattern. You you often see it um, in real life uh, psychology that, for example, victims of abuse uh, often uh, turn to be to be abusers themselves in in, in adult life. Because, um, because they sort of, it seems normal to them because they've been conditioned by all the years they they've been in this um, in this situation to think that it is a normal um, a normal thing to to you know to be to be abused. So they in turn um, also abuse uh, their kin when they grow older. Mm, what to do here? I need to move my diplomat. This one goes to Gondor, if I remember right. Oh, actually, quite a big army of Easterlings here, which is uh, useful information. This one goes to Rohan. Orders mm. chief. I need to train some more troops. Mm. Move out. Move. Lord. General. 
Okay. So in turn. Yeah, once again. I need to deal with this old Elven Hogwash. So well, what can you do? As Gimli himself said uh, in the film, never trust an elf. It was quite an accurate assessment of reality. Because mm, the elves are fickle creatures. So you never know what sick ideas they have in their heads. Mm. Okay, now mm, I will probably mm, move this. General, Although I'm not sure if that's enough troops to actually face uh, this army, so maybe I should mm, wait a little until the dragon slayers arrive. Mm, I'll stand at the, at the river crossing because if the goblins choose to attack me, oh, I can hire some mercenaries as cannon fodder to tie the enemy down while I maneuver the rest of my troops, which is always um, beneficial. Orders. Mm, you go to Rohan and you go to Gondor. Uh, yeah, it seems that uh, that's enough for this turn as well. Ah, I forgot to... Damn it, they will attack my... I forgot to... to enter the ceasefire with the elves again. So I will do, the, do this the first thing in this turn. Although they will obviously break it just in the, just the next turn. As they always do. But oh well. We must just mm, deal with it. There is no other way, really. Because uh, the AI is sort of broken, as I already mentioned. Mm, it's quite a large army. Actually, there are a couple of stacks of goblins now that are approaching. I'll take this group of vanguards as well. Mm. Actually, Thorin's army may not be enough to mm, to deal with the, all those goblins. Although it would probably be a good idea to take mm, the city and then use it as a defensive position because it has walls now. So. That would be a little easier to to protect, although I am also worried that they may cross the river here and attack this village. Mm. I'm still wondering if I should try to conquer this settlement. Yes. Mm. I'll try to to transform the... to transfer this unit. Um, I can't because I am blocked by the other stand. Uh, I wanted to help uh, Nail here to, to add this unit to his army because that would, would probably be enough for me to, to actually succeed. We'll see how it goes in the next turn. I am afraid that the elves may actually attack this lone unit. We're surrounded. They didn't, which is 
Are they a surprise? Mm. Yes, yeah, as I, as I thought, they want to to attack this uh, this settlement here, and this force is really small, so it's also dangerous to. Mm. I would be probably be able to easily deal with this force. Uh, using the berserkers and all all those uh, general units, especially with the with having the walls. So, um, the elves actually retreated, which is a good thing. Now I can. And they are still blocking me, but maybe they will move further south, and then I'll be able to join this army and retake uh, this um, this camp. Mm. I'm not sure what I should do here. I'm sort of tempted. Oh, they have the unit, a unit of trolls, so that is a sort of bigger business than I anticipated. I will return to this to this village here and wait for my dragon slayers to arrive while training additional units here. Mm. Okay, okay, so, so that's, that's enough for this turn. Am I at peace with the elves currently? Yes. Um. Yeah, end turn. We're surrounded. Yeah, I should be probably be able to deal with this. They have only one unit of trolls, and they have plenty of axe throwers, which are really besides the dragon slayers, they are probably the best. Mm, the best unit to, to fight the trolls because uh, they have very powerful uh, missile attack and the trolls are big so they are they sort of stand over your troops and uh, can be hit even when engaging mm, yeah but I don't have walls here mm. I just concentrate my forces mm, around the plaza here Build sort of uh, defensive uh, box. Uh, I need to remember all my units this time because mm, I once left a unit mm, out in the outer rim of the village and it got slaughtered. So. Yeah, these humans will mostly just serve as, as cannon fodder because uh, they are really weak and um, can't really contribute anything meaningful to the battle besides um, besides giving me sort of additional bodies and warsmiths. Mm. I will use them to flank, so... Yeah, I need to concentrate on taking down the trolls, because the rest of the Goblin army should be relatively easy easy to, uh, to take down, as they are really not the greatest of creatures. Here you, here you can see the trolls, obviously. You know, the, the graphics aren't as good as in Ferdridge, but I still kind of like it. They have this really menacing green on their faces, and they are probably more dangerous than in Ferdridge because they have a splash attack. So basically, they affect several units um, with, which if, which e with each hit, so um, it makes them a little more dangerous than in, uh, than in Ferdridge. Especially uh, the Mordor Trolls, the endgame units of armored trolls, um, are one of the most dangerous units in the game, actually. Because in addition to powerful attack, they also have pretty high armor, so... Yeah, 
yeah, yeah I, I just, just I just concentrate my axe throwers on the unit of trolls, and they should go down mm, quite easily before mm, killing too, too many of my units. And these human troops will provide a sort of cushion for a, a buffer of sorts. Mm, they will engage the trolls and sort of stop them with their very bodies while I throw axes at them. It's getting a little laggy before because of all the units on the field. But I will thin them out shortly so. As you can see, the trolls they have entered sort of reserve mode. You can see how quickly the axemen are dropping. But you can also see the trolls are dropping as well because of my um, axe throwers. So they should uh, die pretty soon. And the axemen have. Uh, Serve the, their purpose, basically. Mm. It's a shame I, that I don't have a catapult because mm, that would be a really good target. At last. The enemy general has been slain. Fight on, my brothers. Yeah, so the trolls are basically done. Although they have decimated one of, well, half of the unit of Vanguard, so that shows you they are quite a menace if used uh, correctly. I will flank with those units. And also, uh, I will bring the axe to the back. Mm. Oh, they actually attacked me from the rear. I didn't expect that of the, AI, of the AI because it's really not the sharpest knife in the drawer. This, mm, this button that you have in, for example, Medieval that lets you highlight all of your troops and all of the enemy troops because it gets a little confusing in big battles such as this um, when it comes to telling your own troops from the enemy troops to sort of orientate yourself in the, in the status of the battle I'm not charging forward with this force because I want to leave the basically leave the view open for the axe throwers to throw their axes. And I will move this unit over here to throw axes at uh, this group of enemies. Them. 
uh, it's something for which the humans are also useful because obviously um, they are faster than the dwarves so it's easier for them to catch the fleeing enemies and they will be breaking pretty soon they actually want to get back to the fight. Well, it's good for me because I want to see them dead, so... And there they are breaking in this sort of encirclement. Mm, but they will be pretty much slaughtered. They don't have uh, many options to run, to actually retreat those, because why to... They don't have the need to engage if, if they are actually steady to fight. I can engage with my regular infantry because um, that would uh, lessen my casualties. Yeah, and that's what I like. 91% of, of enemy is killed, so... If any luck, the whole, um, whole army will be annihilated on, on the battle map. I'll try to chase them, the fleeing ones with, with the humans, and with the extra work as well. Though there are, there are not many left here, and I'll try to destroy this this group here. Yeah, continue what is this? just for a moment the enemy to army in flight. Drain them to ruin with axe and destroy sword. those few units that are left. Yeah, 90, uh, 90, 98% uh, of dead, so I think that will take care of, of this army. Yeah, that's enough. A clear victory to the sons of Durin. The enemy lies slaughtered. They sure do. We're surrounded. Obviously. Okay, but mm, that's actually enough for this episode. See you in the next one. Bye.